Welcome to the Overcoming Mediocrity Podcast, where today's top influencers and entrepreneurs on the rise share empowering stories and ninja tips to become the fuel that ignites a positive change in your life. Our guests don't simply coast through life. They don't let difficult situations stop them. They set big goals, keep their eyes on the prize, and they're joining us today to share insider secrets you can use right now to step into your power and live your purpose. Now, here's your host, Christy Rafino. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of the Overcoming Mediocrity podcast. I am Christy Rafino, the host of the show and the one who gets to introduce our guest today, Tiffany Ann Lewis. And I met Tiffany about a year and a half ago. Uh, she was introduced to me and I uh, got to know her through various conversations, as well as helping her get her story out in the world in a big way with our Overcoming Mediocrity Unstoppable Woman edition. So we're going to get to her story in a moment, as well as some ninja tips that she's, I know, dying to share with you. But before then, I want to give you a little background about who Tiffany is. So Tiffany is the creator of More Meaningful Marketing. She is a mother and an avid coffee drinker with a wit and true passion for helping women entrepreneurs build a confidence, courage, and personal brand that will propel their side hustle forward. After losing her corporate job years ago because she prioritized her family, Tiffany vowed to follow her dreams of building a successful digital marketing business while watching her daughter grow. And now, pretty soon, she's got another one on the way. So that's, I'm so happy for Tiffany and her husband. So Tiffany believes that the story you tell others about your brand becomes the cornerstone of why your clients do business with you and continue to do business with you, and I'm sure refer business to you. Therefore, she's passionate about merging personal and professional branding to create an authentic, unforgettable marketing experience. So welcome, Tiffany. I'm so excited to have you on the show today. Thank you so much, Christy. I'm super excited to be here. Yeah. So gosh, I know you have so many layers of what you do and um, your story and how you got to where you are, but I know you have a specific journey that you went on that really made you realize that you are in the best position to help the clients that you currently serve. So can you share a little bit about that journey? Yes, absolutely. And it's the journey that I shared in the Overcoming Mediocrity series, and it's I'm passionate about it. Um, took a little while to share. You know, I did lose my corporate job, as you mentioned, for prioritizing my family. And while that was not, I guess, a surprising experience to have because I watched it happen to other women around me, it was definitely a hard experience to have firsthand, especially because I loved my job so much and I was in the corporate world for gosh, I think 12 or 13 years before I decided to jump into entrepreneurship. But as a mom, you know, uh, those babies need us and we love them more than I know I thought possible. <laughs> and so when I was trying to juggle both corporate me and entrepreneur me, I realized that there was such a disconnect with who my true self was versus, you know, who I was portraying in corporate. And so I see other women just like me now battling that same struggle, especially with COVID, maybe not feeling as secure or stable in their corporate jobs and wanting to make that leap and maybe having side hustles already, but really, you know, not having that confidence, that courage or marketing know-how to really make that happen for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, people, women specifically, who are in a position and this is like my passion as well as, uh, you know, we, we, cause I was in the same position as uh, years ago is I was following the journey that I believed others wanted me to be on, or, you know, the journey that wasn't really true to who I should be, um, or the journey that I should be following. And it didn't allow me to show up authentically and really make the biggest impact. And there was definitely a disconnect. And I talk to so many women who are really kind of stuck in that corporate job and they want to do something different. They want to have the freedom that an entrepreneur, the entrepreneurial journey can bring, but they don't necessarily kind of know how to make it happen. And it's scary, right? 
I'm sure you were scared to death when you made that jump. Well, and you know, fully transparent here, I lost my job before I was ready. And so while I had my business already for about a year or so, it was still surprising. I think when we try to make that transition, we're under the impression that we have to replace our full-time income, or we have to have benefits first, which is very important, you know, Um, but we have all of these perceptions of what we think entrepreneurship will look like. And I don't know about you and your journey, but it looked completely different. You know, um, saying I had to replace my full-time income was sort of silly when I thought about less childcare. You know, my daughter took her first steps at daycare. So that was a moment that felt so yucky. I was like, I have to find a better way. I can't be missing everything. And so, um, and I would love to hear more about your story too, of how once you made the leap, like it can be very scary to think about, but my reality was a lot less scary than what I thought. Yeah. Well, so I kind of was in the same position as you were, where I was forced to uh, get out and do something. And, um, if we can realize, or if other people that are listening right now can realize that it's so much easier if you make the decision and put the pieces in place on your own to transition better than all of a sudden now everything, like the rug is pulled out from underneath you and you've got to figure it all out. So that's kind of where I was as well. It sounds like that's where you are and you are in this really icky place for a long time, obviously, if you, your daughter took her first steps at childcare, you were kind of struggling in this in-between place for, for a while before things actually changed for you. Yes, totally. And so there's a part of my program called the escape plan, (laughs) where it's like, if you really do plan to make this transition, let's help you to be more prepared than we were, right? Like when you're like the rugs pulled out from under you and you're scrambling and you're making emotional decisions, it's hard. Like, yeah, it lights a fire in some ways. Maybe that makes it easier, but I don't know about you. I would have much rather had a better bank account, a more firm plan and just a direction before that happened. Yeah, absolutely. So do you want to share a little bit more about your story and the journey that you were on? I feel like I'm kind of taking over here, but no, that's okay. I'm hijacking the conversation because <laughs> I know I resonate a lot with what you're sharing. Um, my change was a divorce. Yours was a, you know, a, a corporate job ending. Um, but, you know, that whole journey is what, like I said earlier, has positioned you to be the person, like the person that can provide the best solution for other women who are struggling in that corporate space right now. So do you want to share a little bit more about your story? Yes, because I was that woman in my cubicle, like no matter how much expensive coffee I bought, no no matter how many great shoes I wore, I was unhappy. I was getting my expensive coffee and crying in my cube, like my baby is at daycare and she was a late walker. So she didn't walk until like 17 months. So I really battled this for a long time. And so as she was born, she had colic and she had reflux and she um, ended up having a milk protein allergy. Then it goes to asthma. You know, we're not prepared to become mothers. It's all hypothetical until that baby gets here. And so that transition for me was so tough. My heartstrings were so pulled. I figured I would keep going at the same pace, traveling, enjoying it so much. And you know, not letting that baby disrupt my 60 hour work week, (laughs) which was so silly in hindsight. So I know a lot of moms share this struggle. And I know as women, we're expected to manage so many priorities and, you know, whether or not you're the breadwinner in your home, you probably have some responsibility over the household if you have the more stable or high paying job. And so, you know, thinking about the things like benefits and what your escape plan looks like and, really weighing all the variables, family and prioritizing that for me was such a motivator that almost nothing else mattered. I had my business um, a year before I actually lost my job. And so I wasn't taking it as seriously. I knew I had that entrepreneurial spirit. And I, my first year I made like $2,000, nothing big. I was just taking like little side projects as they came. And when I got the pink slip and (laughs) I kind of knew that was coming, you know, I spent a couple of uh, days probably wallowing more than I should have. But then I was like, this is really an opportunity to go all in. So whether your journey is intentional or not, I think mindset has a lot to do with the outcome. And I like to talk to women about confidence because I had some bumps and bruises from pre, you know, before motherhood, 
all that we do when we're climbing that ladder to becoming a mom. And then now I have this baby and life certainly has changed. And what does that look like? And so um, knowing your motivations early and understanding what is going to drive you to the finish line, I think is so important, especially as mothers, we just want to be there for everything. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. We should be, we should be. And there's no reason why we can't do it well, both ways. Cause I know you were probably showing up great in your job, right? You were doing the things you needed to do. You may, you weren't working 60 hours anymore. Um, but we can't, we can always make money somewhere else, right? We can always get another job. We can't go back and relive those moments that we've missed with our family, with our children. I don't blame or, or feel that women who are not there, like, you know, sometimes that's all we can do, or that's the only, you know, totally. the only option. So I get that, but if we can figure out a way to, to do it both. And as women, we're really great at doing multiple things, right? We're multitaskers, <laughs> um, totally. but doing in a way that is efficient and that doesn't stress us out and doesn't pull us in too many directions. Um, but when we're able to figure that out, we're in more alignment and then things tend to just work better, right? It just, I, I'm sure that you saw this once you were able to go all in, as you mentioned, um, things just started coming together for you. Yeah. And I think too, in my journey and what I see for other women is that really three foundational pieces are kind of missing when they've already explored like a side hustle and they're looking to transition it into full time. The first one, as I mentioned, it's having the confidence to step out um, creatively, risking, you know, all of the stability they currently have. That's scary, right? And then there's courage to take that leap. Maybe their immediate tribe isn't as supportive as they would hope. Or I know for me, I even had family asking when I was going to get a real job again, what's happening to your 401k? I mean, obviously they're concerned about me, but you don't want to hear those things when you're starting out. So I think finding your tribe early and often is super important. And then, you know, if you have a business and you haven't really delved into the marketing piece, understanding how a strategy and an authenticity can help grow your brand. Oh, totally. All right. So this is good so far and we're setting up perfectly for the next segment. So if you can hang on a moment, Tiffany, and if the audience can hang on a quick moment, we're going to take a short break, come back. And Tiffany, I know has some great ninja tips to share about how somebody who's listening can make that transition a little bit easier. So hang tight. Today's episode is brought to you by the Overcoming Mediocrity Project. Are you ready to share your story in a life-changing book with other success-driven women? Then what if you could use that book to get speaking gigs, podcast interviews, and possibly a new client or two? Wouldn't that be great? Well, watch out, chicken soup. Here comes Overcoming Mediocrity. Our proven system can transform your struggle story into a powerful signature message and then as one chapter in an Amazon best-selling book. Our process is simple and economical, and it will bring a lot of eyeballs on you, your business, and your big message to the world. We welcome you to apply to join our project. Just visit us at overcomingmediocrity.org and click on the apply button at the top of the page. We'll see you soon. Well, welcome back everybody to the Overcoming Mediocrity show here with Christy Rufino and Tiffany Lewis. And I know Tiffany is just excited to dive into some great ninja tips for all of you corporate women out there who are really kind of thinking maybe you want to dive into the entrepreneurial journey, or maybe you are as a, um, a woman right now who is an entrepreneur and you want to really understand how your brand fits into it all. So I know Tiffany's going to cover it all. So let's get started, Tiffany. Welcome back. Thank you so much, Christy. I am super excited to share these tips and right along the lines of what we've already talked about, you know, with being confident and showing up it requires a lot of mindset work. And so when we talk about developing a personal brand and really getting this business to look like what we want it to look like for our lives, right? And for our jobs or careers that we're gonna be building on our own terms, it's important to really face the confidence issues you've had that could hinder your success or be barriers 
to having the courage to really step out. And so step one, I would say, really hold yourself accountable for identifying those barriers to your confidence, really deep diving, you know, confidence for women starts so young and it could be something so small that was 20 years ago, all the way leading up to the time you decide to take the leap, right? And so identifying what that looks like, pen to paper, writing those items down and really being accountable and dissecting those and making sure that the person who shows up after that work looks better than the person who was held back before that work. So for me, I put on a bright shade of red lipstick every day. We're in the mask era still with COVID, but I am still rocking my red lips under that mask because it makes me feel good. So my thoughts are, is once you've identified those barriers that could hold you back, you're in a really great position to then develop the confidence that you need, but also the courage that is going to be required to really pursue your own journey fearlessly. Um, you know, it takes a lot of courage to leave that stability we feel in corporate and as women to make the leap into what some would consider a dreamer's arena, right? And being responsible for our own destiny. And so I have a free guide that I wanted to share as well. That's called the realist's guide for letting go of your nine to five. So that courage really starts with being proactive about your decisions from the time you decide you're going to make that leap. And it could be something as simple as, you know, as, as planning your savings account, right? All the way to being as granular as unsubscribing to those unnecessary emails that we all have. How many times have you been going to a store because you have a coupon or there's like an awesome shoe sale? I've been there. And so those items are included in that guide, um, you know, but also as you work through that confidence and courage piece, you wanna make sure that that authentic self that shows up as a result is apparent in your branding to be able to propel your business forward. And so personal branding is such a big part of business today and marketing. And we don't have to worry anymore by the step that someone's not going to like us or what are the corporate, or what are our former corporate colleagues going to think about us taking this journey? Are they gonna think that we couldn't find a better job, another job, another way? And so being prepared to show up for those conversations and have the courage to defend not that you have to justify your position, but feeling good about your path is such a big part of how your business will be portrayed and how it will unfold for you. So let's go back. You've really shared some a lot of great stuff. So let's go back to confidence and identifying the barriers that hold us back. And yes, I know we all have stories that we have been telling ourselves for years. And it could just be one thing that happened to us at, you know, in fifth grade that created that, that belief system in us. And then we keep perpetuating it forward by, um, you know, letting that story continue to play in our mind. So the only way to stop that is to identify it and be able to share or tell ourselves a new story. And I love that is that you pointed that out because it's really very easy to do but we've got to figure it out first to be able to reprogram ourselves. So that's perfect. Um, and then courage, taking the leap, but you know what? It's taking the leap one step at a time. Totally. And I think, I think the scary piece is that we feel that we've got to take the leap and it's just all or nothing. And it is not, you may have to take a hundred steps to get there. Maybe it's only 20 steps. We don't know how many steps we have to take, but it's always a journey. And if we take every step in faith, just knowing we're going in the right direction, even if we kind of veer off here and there, we just, like Siri says, recalculate, you know, we get back on course. <laughs> That's, totally. that's not Siri, yeah. but you know, the, the, the GPS lady, the GPS, I don't know. Yeah. does she have a name? Um, but yeah, we just re-collaborate and get back on track and- if we think about the whole thing, we get overwhelmed. And if we just think about one, what is our next step? And we just keep doing that and then it will work. So that's great. I like what you're saying too, just in that same thought is that it's a journey, right? Like just because I'm sitting here sharing parts of my story and we are talking about our stories, doesn't mean it's over for us today, that it's going to be over for us for a week from now, right? We're going to encounter different things, good and bad that are going to, going to try to reshape us and how we stand in that confident place and understand our own journey strategically and doing that work proactively is just going to keep taking us to progress every day, small or big, and help us celebrate our achievements kind of as we accomplish them. Oh gosh, absolutely. 
All right, and then brand and to be able to show up authentically. And I feel that sometimes women, a lot of women, not all women, a lot of women just, they want to please everybody and they want to, they don't want to cause waves and they just want, like, they just want to, like, they're afraid to be polarizing. But what happens is unless we're able to create raving fans, you kind of get lost in the marketplace. So, and this is really something that I am still struggling with and, and still like, you know, stepping deeper into my brand, but I really want people that don't just like me. I want them to either love me or not want leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. Leave me alone. Not want anything to do with me because we all have so many choices in life. Why would somebody really want my support if they just thought, you know, I was okay. No, I want them to be like, oh, she is like the rock star. I love her. I resonate with her. You know, she's a badass Harley rider and she does great things yes, for clients. <laughs> so uh, like, I, I, we really need to, to do that, to be able to rise above our competition. Right. Really? So I love how that yeah. you help people figure that out. And I love that you stand so firmly in who you are too. I think the more honest and authentic we can be early, we do create those raving fans or we decide to repel, you know, inadvertently or on purpose, however you look at it, the wrong people for us, making that pool of people who really love us, the quality. Yeah. Yeah. And I've really been blessed to figure this out with women like you, because when I talk to them and help, help them really identify their story and, and their journey. And, and like one of the, my more recent clients, you know, she has a really successful or has had a really successful career or um, business, or she's been a part of this business of horse training and horse, you know, selling and riding and coaching and training and all that stuff. And then she was looking to step out of it and figure something out. And I'm like, well, you can do like that. That's part of who you are. And so mm -hmm. what, once she's in, she embraced that her business is just like, she's pivoted to what she thought it was to what it really is. And like, people are just coming to her. Like, she's not even like, she can't even keep up with it, with it all, but it's, she's identified who she was. And now other people are identifying with her and they're gravitating towards her. Mm -hmm. So it's great. It is the it's the power of attraction marketing, it right? Is. We don't really know how it happened. Well, we do know it's a lot of psychology, but it's work over time with intention. And so when is that minute you can merge that personal and professional brand and really love it and just live so easily that marketing becomes yeah. a lot more simplified. People stop hating it. People have such a misperception uh, about marketing. And then when you don't have to act or put really strong effort toward it, it just unfolds like you've said. Yeah. Yeah, that's when we can stop hunting down clients because they start coming to us. It's great. Mm -hmm. And then one thing that you mentioned earlier, but it wasn't necessarily a tip, but I want to point out because it's huge, is you talked about confidence, courage, your brand, community. Because yeah. when we step into this entrepreneurial space, it is so critical. I don't even want to say it's important. It's critical that we align ourselves with other entrepreneurs. And mostly because our family, our friends, the people that love us, they want the best for us, but not everybody is wired to be an entrepreneur and not everybody understands the journey. And, and you know, I've had people say to me, well, when are you gonna get a real job? Well, you know, I have a job I love. I'm making great money. I'm serving people. It's, it's like awesome. but the non-entrepreneurs can't support us like we need. And we have to be able to surround ourselves with those type of people, because that is really the best. I feel when it's a critical place that it's, gosh, a critical piece of the pie. You have to have the community of people that are doing the same thing you're doing, people that have done what you are trying to do, and people who have succeeded so you can continue to rise above, you know, what your current expectations are. Because when you take that one step at a time, we don't know what next year's journey is going to be. And every year our, our belief system around that, it keeps expanding. And the only way that's going to happen is if we surround ourselves with the right type of community. 
Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And I don't know about you, but I spent a lot of time early convincing, convincing everyone, right? Like even people who are in my immediate circle, it's like, well, thanks. You bought a product or service. That's great. But they weren't my ideal clients. And had I put that work in earlier, uh, you know, a big part of the program is teaching people what I wish I knew sooner. And so that community, you're so right. It is just make or break for success. Yeah. So tell me about the community you have, because I know during our break, you talked about your awesome Facebook group. So we're going to make sure that the link for that, as well as your free gift, your website, all of your contact information will be in the show notes below. Um, But tell us about your, your Facebook community. Yes. Before I do, Christy, I just want to say being a part of your publishing projects, I mean, you have so many and they've been so successful and having the number one Amazon bestselling, you know, title and all of those things that come with it has really pivoted my business to be able to really share this story in a way that I hadn't been encouraged to do before. And so just in this short year and a half, my whole journey has changed. So I just want to thank you for everything you did to nurture my story being told in a way that could help others. Oh, thank you. I'm going to have to take that little clip and separate it and use that on our website. (laughs) That was totally. great. I, I totally appreciate that. Tiffany. No, it's, it's yeah. really, it's really great. Um, working with women like you, because you are all out with a passion to really live your best self and not do it for yourself, but do it in service of others. And so I have definitely seen, I, you know, right when we got on our call today, I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe what your business is doing. I've seen such a huge change and growth in, in how you're showing up online and the, the people you're serving and everything you're doing. And it's just really exciting to see. Yeah. Awesome. I've loved this journey. Um, but to share my Facebook group and kind of how that's evolved, it's been so wonderful. So it's called Transform from Corporate Woman to Fearless Entrepreneur. And it was really to create the community that I didn't know I needed until I knew I needed it. So one of those lessons learned that I love to share, but it's full of just inspiration, you know, things that I've learned, women empowering other women, asking for tips. I do a marketing Monday each week and We've now launched the Fearless Entrepreneur Experience, which is the next step of gaining that confidence, courage, and personal brand um, all the way to one-on-one time if you need it to really come out of your shell, be able to choose entrepreneurship and do so willingly, authentically, and just with such conviction that you wouldn't do anything else. (laughs) Oh, that is great. That is great. So everybody that's listening, make sure you connect with Tiffany. All of her contact information will be in the show notes below. I want to thank you, Tiffany, for joining us today and just for being such an inspiration to our audience. Thank you, Christy. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to the Overcoming Mediocrity podcast, where we believe that everyone can have the business and life of their dreams once they've learned the art of mastering their story. Mastering our stories is the key to everything we want in life. Our stories can either hold us back or they can propel us to new heights. We can choose. You can choose. Choose to overcome mediocrity with us. Let's achieve greatness together. To learn more, visit www.overcomingmediocrity.org. And don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review this podcast.